What are the benefits for Bulgaria to become part of the Eurozone? Do you think that currency board is the better version for our economy? There don't seem to be many disadvantages uh, to staying with the currency board. Uh, clearly, the Eurozone is beset with problems. Uh, it's admitted by all the leaders of the Eurozone, particularly the German finance minister, Mr. Schaubler, has pointed out in a, a major article very recently that the structure of the Eurozone is riddled with problems. Clearly, there are solutions to those problems, and when they're sorted out, maybe that's the time for Bulgaria to consider changing its status. Which are the positive and the negative points of the Eurozone? Yeah, these kinds of debates can easily become very factionalized. You know, temperatures soar as people get very exercised about ideological positions. Should we be in the Eurozone or out of the Eurozone? But there are subtle questions of definition here as well. Everybody wants Europe to have a basic flourishing economy. But clearly right now, that is not the position. Uh, I think it, you know, it, it's like thinking about your own family or your own company is the way to think about your own nation. Does Bulgaria want to continue to be an independent sovereign state? There's no real suggestion amongst many European nations, with one or two exceptions, that they want to give up sovereignty. And we look at the latest discussions even this week about the way treaties are going to be carefully restructured to enable the banking union and maybe further institutional union, which Herr Schäuble and others have set out as the way forward over the next five years to fix the Eurozone's problems. As I say, that, that may happen, that, that may not happen. Um, the idea of a completely unified Europe seems to have contradictions at its heart. For example, the concept that Europe needs to have a single currency that every country uses. Well, right now, that has ended. Cyprus has a different currency from every other country in the Eurozone. When one country has um, currency controls in place, when there is no free movement of money in and out of that country, then there is a different exchange rate at which you can sell a separate euro from the rate at which you can sell uh, a non-separate euro. So these conflicts and contradictions have to be resolved uh, for that question to be easily answered. A second point, of course, is the issue of currency choice itself. Again, this subject provokes tremendous um, uh, debate, even amongst people who appear to be ideologically closely committed. You'll find the free market enthusiasts and the libertarians taking the opportunity to talk about a return to the gold standard. I myself have spoken uh, at many media events about how we have a 5,000 year history of gold as a money basis, 42 years now of uncontrolled government paper money. You know, ha hasn't worked that well, so maybe we should be thinking about return to gold. And I think I'm ideologically in that camp. But would you, if you were elected finance minister of Bulgaria today, think, right, let's get out of the Eurozone and let's have our currency board link Bulgaria to gold? I'm not sure that you would do it today, tomorrow, because I don't think you can go from chaos to heaven in 24 hours. We cannot possibly have all the information to, to hand that all the wonderful academics here in these universities do. So we're keen to form alliances and just encourage intelligent media such as yourselves to really focus hard on the, on the, on the, on the edicts, the emissions and the statements and policy statements going forward. Because when policy statements are confused, then if you act upon them, you'll make mistakes. One obvious example is austerity. Austerity has become the buzzword. It's been on the front of every politician's notes for the last two or three years, but the word has constantly been redefined. For the last 12 months, it was used by countries like Italy to justify raising taxes rather than cutting spending. The project Bank Union is a main topic right now in EU. What will be the effect for our banking system if we join this union? Because we know that we can do it without being in Eurozone. Of course. I think, the, uh, uh, as per my response to your first question, I really do think that Bulgaria's new government has a wonderful challenge uh, and an opportunity to really understand and analyze the, the, the present position and what these proposals for a banking union really mean. 
I'm concerned about the proposals because I think they encompass some really bad mistakes. Uh, I'm not saying that people who make the mistakes are bad people, they just believe what they're told, but they don't really understand banking. And forgive me if I claim that that is my specialist subject, having worked for major investment banks for many, many years. Uh, banking has become a scandalous business in the Western world. The big banking, not Bulgarian banking, American and UK banking, it's a scandalous business run by people whose primary concern is their own incomes. And the last of their concerns is the economic health of the nation. In fact, the perverse response of bailing out banks in the UK and in America, rather than allowing them to fail, has actually encouraged the arrogance of these bankers and increased their compensation. And one could argue that they've effectively converted taxpayer bailout funds into personal compensation. We had the senior man at Goldman Sachs quoting that Goldman Sachs were doing God's work by carrying on as they were. So, you know, with these people having incredibly powerful lobbying groups and the major auditing firms, or I think they call themselves professional servicing firms because the big accounting firms are more interested in consultancy work rather than auditing, then you, know, you have a tremendous amount of lobbying power going into the European Parliament uh, to encourage them to say, leave everything as it is.